Hello YouTube, and welcome to Cage of Shadows, and episode 1 of Shadow Run Hong Kong. Oh yes, it's dropped. It's Thursday night in the UK, it's about half six. Got it downloaded from Steam, and you know, I've pushed everything else aside tonight. I wasn't expecting to get some game, game time tonight. I thought it was going to drop ridiculously late at 10pm uh, US time, so I wasn't... But no, it's here. So, we have to crack straight on with this bad boy. And we're going to get into the shadows. So, let's play. New campaign. I'm going to leave it on normal because I think that's. Um, minor bug. We just dropped out. Let's stitch it together. Right. What are we going to create? Well, I'm going to be a human. And um, we're definitely going to be in a custom build because that's how we play this. Um, I'm not going to be a chick. I think, for those of you that did watch my Mikuro playthrough last weekend, so this is less than a week, um, I played my uh, my, gun, my Gunsling and Decker. I want to do something different, but at the same time, I really want to explore the new Matrix. Because it looks shiny. <laughs> so, uh, I'm tempted to go with the, deck, the pistol Decker again, guys. Um, you know, we, we know what other team members are potentially available. Um, and if I take the decking role, I won't be able to use Isabella, the little dwarf decker. But there's still plenty of other teammates to choose from. And I must admit, this portrait, it got it got tweeted last week. I think it's a fan portrait. And I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> so I'm really going to do something slightly different. And um, do that mug shot. Because I just think it looks hilarious. It actually, it feels like a rigged mugshot though. I don't know why. It hasn't got too much tech on it. It's got the whole, you know, tribal tattoo. But I don't know. Um, it may be the cigar. It's just like, oh, do it. I just never got very far riggers because I'm not very good at using pets, drones. So I don't play uh, shamans particularly well either. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do. But some of these new pictures are awesome. Um. Strange enough, I'm planning for a UGC myself, something to do with uh, the cat mentor, so the cat mental spirit. So that will be very useful in the future for me, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Are we just going to drop the cage again, everybody? Look, they have changed this model though. But I'm tempted just to drop cage. You know, we played for Mercurial. You see me play for it there with the guns thing and Decker. Let's see how that handles in Hong Kong. Continue. Right, buddy. I have looked. Yeah. Okay, guys. Boom. Straight away. New character creation screen. I I I'd done a quick jaunt in here beforehand, um, just to have a look, and I saw this and was like, whoa, that's totally crazily different. And look, there's cyberware affinity stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna go through it all for you, but there's uh, Wolverine. There's spurs and razors and benefits for that. So it's pretty sweet. All right. Boom. 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 Range combat, intelligence, deck, 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 charisma, etiquette. No new etiquettes, so you know, um, UGCs will still have all the same available. I'm corporate security, or I think this time I think I can be a shadow runner, so I know the shadow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a badass shadow runner, so I'm gonna know about shadow runners. Yeah, hell yeah. Alright. Uh, 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 boot. No! That's slightly wrong. Why'd I do that slightly wrong? Oh, fuck. I don't want Mark 2. I don't care about that. Hell no. Auto reload. Yeah. Alright, bitches. Let's rock. What the hell? I've got to come up with names? Like. Alright. Oh, this is Kate from Pen and Paper, Cyberpunk 2020. That was Cage's real name. So, that was easy, wasn't it? That's new. I, d I hadn't got that far. I hadn't clicked go, so... Ha! Cinematics? Ooh. You have one new message. <laughs> uh, hi. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but...
but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story, that if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood and we didn't leave things in a good place, but you and Duncan are the only real family I have. What's about that, Duncan? If our past means anything to you, meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. Okay, person. Personal plot? I'm almost out of time. Ah, oh, sprawl of Hong Kong. I think this is where I set my very, very first tabletop Shadowrun that I ran uh, in 4th edition. I'm not that, I'm not an old hand at Shadowrun, not by any means, but yeah. Played a couple of games in 3rd Ed, ran it myself in 4th Ed, ran it myself in 5th Ed and playing it in 5th Ed. Okay, hard landing. Raymond Black, the old man gave you a home once, took you and Duncan off the gang the streets of the Barons. Sheltered, educated, sapped sense into you both until you almost resembled productive members of society. And then you took off, left it all behind, landed behind bars for a time, tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice. To out the blue, you got this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong right away. And wired your account enough New Yen to pay for a flight and then some. The scent is rough. A score comes out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. Suborbital transport with a rigged shudder, ragged shudder. The plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Czech Lamp Cock Tarmac. I'm going to butcher all these Oriental names, aren't I? If anybody's seen my Mercurial playthrough, that well, I can't pronounce their first name right, so God knows what I'm going to do with this Chinese uh, themes. Uh, an hour and an innumerable number of emotionless security checkpoints. Later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbour. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. Go. Awesome. Let's zoom in. Animation! Oh, this is all really different. Oh, I've got some cash. You step from the churning of the water taxi to a ponderous rock in the docks, your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft back into the harbour. That did not look like a small craft. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag when you stepped on board filled with gear, some stiff new body armour and a note. Better safe than sorry. D. So, Duncan, we presume. Above, smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city in a nauseating swell. The wind changes directions more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas, diesel, sea salt, street food and filth. It's all you can do to keep your in-flight meal where it belongs. I'm a fucking hardened shadow runner that I've spent jail time for, which means I've got a corp I've got a criminal sin in back in Seattle, which can't be good. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first an orc, lean, with in your face muscle and a jaw made to break fists. <laughs> That's an interesting choice of <laughs> phrase. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against a hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Duncan. Hey. Well, don't you look like shit. Duncan Wu. The closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years. Still as charming as ever. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he grins. Green's not really your colour, Alex. Doesn't go with that nice new armour I got you. So we're going to have na real names and shadow and street names. Interesting. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid bubbling sensation. Lovely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Be a wuss, but I got body free. Oh yeah. Tough it out. 
Don't know what you're talking about. Must be the harbour lighting messing with you. Must be. Guess you've still got some of your old fortitude at least. He laughs. Considering how much synth hole we used to put down, I'd be surprised if you couldn't handle it or chop. Anyway, we've got to go find Raymond. Where's the old man? Never showed up. He's still got the same baritone rasp. Had it since he was 12. Woo developed early. Oh, God. <laughs> really? Um, when was the last time you saw him? A few weeks ago, before I got his message telling us to meet him here. I've been working a lot, so I hadn't been by his house in a while. Any idea what's going on? The orc bows his head. Oh, that's an orc. Oh, yeah, cause tusks. Ugh, it looks like an elf with the ears. My bad. The orc bows his head. His voice sounds far away. No clue. All I know is that Raymond hasn't been himself in a long time. How so? He's been restless. Say in his study, inside his own head a lot. And he barely sleeps anymore. I might not be sleeping much at the moment. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about it. He looks up at you and shrugs, and I didn't have a brother to turn to. Hell, wasn't too sure you were even alive, still, until Raymond managed to track you, track down your number. The woman standing beside him breaks in, we should get along, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. They're wearing Lone Star body armor, looks like Duncan Wu's gone private police. And I've got a, and I'm a criminal from Seattle. Oh, that's going to end well. Sarge. The woman taps her chest with an armoured finger. Carter, Seattle Lone Star. I'm Duncan's partner. Hang on, I thought I was want wanted it I, I was a criminal in Seattle. Oh crap. And superior officer. She grins. I let him carry my coffee with me sometimes. Right, he's barking tickets, that kind of thing. Right, my I feel I could use some backup. Didn't know what R Raid got himself into and I wasn't sure you were gonna show. It's a tossed off remark. Tossed off remark. There's an undercurrent of resentment in it. You got something you want to say? Nope. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Alex. Seriously, but I'm going to need some time to get used to having you around again. Been a while since I heard from you. You know what I mean? Memories of sleepless nights in lockup in lockup flash by. Wondering if you ever see Duncan or Raymond again. Wondering if you ever wanted to. And then, stepping into the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring, a few hundred million worth of apology from your former jailers, and a decision to start a new life. To leave the past behind, all of it, until now. I have my reasons, can we leave it at that? Yeah, dark, mysterious stranger, yeah. Who says you, his goggles reflect in the harbour lights, sure. He scans the waterfront, frowning. Let's just find Raymond, he was supposed to meet us in the plaza on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner you can all have a big happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins. And the sooner I can find a place to get to get a drink round her. Damn right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises serpent-like from the sea. Government and Megacorp coiled together. We writhing in their basket of institutionalised corruption. That's a horribly long word. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier, Carter follows. Head to the meet and play, keep the team alive. Oh, that's never a good. Oh, they've changed the icons here as well. It's a kit bag instead of a pistol. So. Trained by Lone Star, an expert in assault rifle combat and non lethal takedowns. I like the sound of the assault rifle combat. And he's got a s thrown weapons free, close combat free, range combat free. Wow, he's a bit of a badass to be honest. Body 5, willpower 3. And then his boss, Carter. Range combat rifle, spell casting 4. Alright, she's a mage. Nice. Um, I presume it would have auto saved. I'm gonna. Right, let's zoom out a bit and look around this docks. Oh, nice bit of construction. Um, hit that. Oh, look, there's an aspect icon up there. The power of the alt key. Oh, yes. Alright, here we go. Fresh construction. Expand the harbour into the water. Corporate interests can afford to create new, sh new streets. Alright. Boring. That's locked. 
Man, that's a dead end. Really? Lock the gate. I wonder what the problem is. The guard shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the gate a push, but it doesn't budge. Huh. Well, that was open earlier. Duncan frowns. Looks pretty solid. <laughs> I like the bottom one. Bang your head against it hard enough, it'll open. Uh, I guess we have to find... No. Shouldn't there be someone here to let us out or something? Yeah, smells a little funny, don't it? Mm -hmm. Carter shrugs. Who knows, it's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. Come on, rookie. We cut through this construction site. I hate it when you call me that. Haha! <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Love it. I should zoom in a bit, make it look a bit prettier. But yeah, they've definitely updated the model. So I want my black trench coat! <laughs> The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down into your chair and stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, then throws Wu a backward glance. It looks like there's another way off the docks on the other side of the gate. I think I can bypass the lock. Oh, I'm going to take a crack at it. Carter steps aside to let you at the panel. Enjoy. This is civilian area and security is light. You bypass the door circuit with ease. The gate rattle open. Rattles open. Boom! And the game saved. So, what ambush are we going to walk into now? Movement. Shouting in Cantonese. More Cantonese. Too quick to catch. Oh, nice little. Great. And I'm so far forward, and that's a shotgun. The group on the dock was fi fishing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing into the distance. They close on you, red face and yelling. The light of the harbour glints for the weapons as they approach. Their leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lessons that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Wu speaks with authority. His Cantonese is as solid as ever. You, he never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing. The smuggler smiles. Oh yeah, we're fishing for assholes. We point at, his, at their weapons. You're going to need some better bait. All you're going to catch with that is trouble. <laughs> Whispered to Duncan, seriously, did they teach that in rent a copper school? <laughs> he turns you a smile, starts on his face, then he thinks better off it, turns back to the smuggler. We flushes his badge, Lone Star, put the guns down. The smuggler squints at Wu's badge, then smiles at his friends. Never seen a like badge like that before, either it's fake or you're some kind of security guard. He grabs his rifle. He, gra gra he grasps there his rifle. Either way, this ends the same. I think he's done talking, so do I. Genius. Oh, turn based combat. You were in turn based combat, each character from Team's Action Point, blah 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 blah. Additional tutorials, nope. Done this dance before. Right. Misa wants some cover. Oh, sorry, that was terrible. I sh Ugh. Let's not try and do that. We won't do that again, people, I promise. Mage. Gank. How is that mage in cover? Right, you have an assault rifle, don't you? You have an assault rifle at range. Really? Um. Oh, damn it, there's a name. She's got aim, I forgot she was a mage. Strip armor, heal wound. With other heal wound spells. That's interesting. I wonder if there's more than one heal spell now. Let's get you in cover at least. Oh, that's I didn't see that thug there. Enforcer, tattooed gunman. Well, as you don't actually have apart from the mana ball and okay, there we go. Good. Mage ganked. Nice. Smooth animations. I'll give them that much. I think they have improved that. Oh dear. No, you don't get to gank the mage back. Wow, that's a gung ho. Aim, please. Oh, look, did twice. How oh, nice. Duncan, Duncan, Duncan. Okay, you leave me the guy at the back, you put some lead. Oh, beautiful. 
And tattooed gunman. Daka. Daka again. Oh, that's some nice damage. And you missed me. And you missed. Shotguns at range. Not the optimal weapon of choice. Really? Really? Wow. Two damage a piece sucks. Hmm, I wonder if we can do a mana ball. Ah, oh, give it a go. Whee! 20 damage. Ugh. Damn it. Um, I don't really want to get that much closer to a guy with a shotgun, but I'm just going to stand back. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Do you think those, you think those guys were triad? I don't know. Not sure, I don't recognise their tattoos. Because you're from Seattle, you're not from Hong Kong. Like I am. And yeah, I'm working with Lone Star after being obviously a criminal. I like this. It makes perfect sense. Ah, there we go. Yoink. Toko, an illegal street drug made from the leaked kamikaze formula. Body strength, willpower, five rounds. Every time the user is attacked, strength increases. Nice. Take. They've really changed the, um... What's this, I wonder? There's an icon up here. Does that mean it's a combat area or something? Um, actually there's nothing more over here. No. Looking forward to diving into the editor as well. I want to see what that changes that's made. Navigate control. The one's been vandalised and busted up good. A real nightmare repair job. Who stares at the fence considering? Loops and whirls. Razor eyes that glitter in the lamplight. Looks edge with monofilament. The corporations here don't screw around. Why don't we just cut ourselves and open him? She shakes her head. Even if you could, it snapped back on you. Ever seen a high tension wire whip out, whip for a human body? You don't want to. Duncan nods in agreement. We aren't touching it. How about it, Carter? Think you can get the gate open? She winks at him. What do you think? She eyeballs. She eyeballs the job. Take me a, a few minutes though. Frowning, she leads him to get closer to look at the mangled fuse box. A few seconds later, she starts pulling wires and yanking fuses. A look of intense concentration on her face. I thought she was a maid. She's competent. I'm not that one-dimensional. In Cantonese, Alex. He sounds like Raymond when he does that. <laughs> the pen of my aunt is sitting on the end table. Satisfied? What's with the lecture, Wu? His face is impassive. I could tell you couldn't follow... I could tell you... I could tell you couldn't... I could tell you couldn't follow everything those smugglers were shouting. You're rusty and that's dangerous. Only Cantonese from now on. Just like when we lived at Raymond's place. Those endless drills are about to pay off. Fine, it's Ray's mother tongue from here on out. In Canton I'm coming back. It's coming back won't be a problem. It's coming back won't be a problem. He nods, sponsor satisfied, then turns back and scans the horizon. At least you can still handle yourself in a fight. Say nothing. Wu says nothing back. He stands with his back to you, thumbs hooked on his belt. I'm going to remain silent. The silence between you gets louder, heavier. Then it's broken by a sudden wailing screech. Wu hands go to his holster. The screech is replaced by a sound of grinding wheels. Glancing over to the console, you see Carter grinning back at you. Got it. That's nice. Click. Hmm. Nice. The light from the nearby vendor stall stabs into your eyes, triggering a throbbing ache in the back of your skull. You stop short, squinting as rougher voices drift in the wind. Where's everyone else? Where's the damn shipment? Haven't seen them yet, we just got her. The voice becomes irritated. Long way is probably waiting for us so we can haul it out the boat for him. That lazy bar, so let's just hang out here, let him find us. Carter keeps her voice low. Looks like we're on a stroll through Smuggler Central. These gangers don't know we're here. We could probably just slip past. Or we could clip them. They're already looking for us. Might be better to take them out now while we've got the element of surprise on our side. While well, unaware hos hostiles are on screen, press the unholstered button to enter turn-based combat mode. Nice. So you can gank them before they gank you. 
Ah, so this allows us to avoid combat if we choose, or gank them. Um, and I'm not fussed about just killing for killing's sake. Oh, that triggers combat anyway. Oh, and that's a fucking mage from a long way away. Oh, come off it. Really? You're freaking kidding me. Okay, that's why I get it for being nice. Woo. That's the main. And great, you can't see one of them. See that mage? Five HP. What? Screw you. Armor broken, that's really not good. Oh, thank you, now you miss. Oh no. Woo. No. Um, you. You can put that. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with her. Let's just leave her there. Kill it. Thank you. Really would love to get some cover about now. See, I don't know if I go there, I think I can be flanked by him. Let's see what this gives me. Shot. Alright, go there, and I really hope they don't use a grenade, otherwise it's going to freaking hurt. Oh, good. Not good. Oh, come off it. I wonder... It's, again, knowing about the editor, just, uh... HP, I oh, know, free. Ooh, I can... Trade cannot transfer item. Oh, interesting. Alright, guess what? Oh, you can't heal. Oh, doesn't that suck? And you can't lay an AoE down. Alright. Uh, you're going to treat that way. You're going to try and put some lead into these assholes. Alright, good, you have a med kit. Oh, you shit. And Duncan. Woohoo! My turn! God, that did no damage. What the, what, eh? I'm really confused. Why the fuck can I do that? Let's flank him. Oh my god. This is, this combat is definitely a hell of a lot more difficult than, uh... And they're acting pretty intelligent. Daka. Pick up. What's on the motorbike? Oh, what does manage do? Ah. Duncan's locked, but she isn't. Is it drag? It's drag. Nice interface. I like it. I want to look at the menus as well, guys, because these are changed. Trade. Uh, so you can move stuff around mid-run. That's interesting. And my cyberware. That's very different. Hmm, interesting. I like it. No new karma yet. Not surprising, really. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was ironic. 
Right, actually, how much HP have I got? 29 out of 40. Okay, can I use one of those at least, please? Activate. There we go. Awesome. We've got some nice highlights and whatnot, so it's a bit more... You, know, you can see a bit more what you're doing. Oh, there's something down here. Mm. That water effect's actually an improvement as well. That's pretty nice. Oh, so much potential. Oh, I'm looking really forward to diving into the editor with this this lot. Okay. Husky. Husky troll. Crossing the street, you make out four shadowy figures loitering in the, p in the plaza ahead. Troll, orc, dwarf, elf. Two men, two women. They're different from the smugglers on the dock. Alert, poised, professional. You can see they've made a token attempt to conceal their weapons. Cannot take on a four-man runner team. The unspoken message is clear. We're strapped. Mind your manners. Wu stands up tall, takes that amused tone he gets whenever he's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone bigger, someone who doesn't know they're about to go down. <laughs> Enim, folks, you got permits for those bazookas? Husky troll. Thick troll pulls his mouth into a comic frown. Permits? Hmm, give me a minute. He makes a show of patting his pockets. Nope, guess not. I must have dropped uh, mine in the dumpster. Along the last idiot who stepped, stepped to us. Woo, coo coo coolly surveys the scene. Nods in a friendly fashion. Is that right? Well then. You can almost feel Wool's cop training kick in. It's like watching a drone execute a command routine. He reaches for his rifle, brings it up quick, but it's too late. By the time it hits shoulder level, an assortment of nice looking ordnance is already trained on its head. Carter backs him up. She whips her arms forward, fist blazing with magical fire. Her eyes sweep the scene, darting from one to another. All right, everyone just cool off. Victor's voice is casual, amused. He shakes his, his gun in Wu's face. Little that for late, isn't it? <laughs> Raise your weapon to Nah, it's never too late to be cool. <sighs> uh. Draw your part. How about no one? See, okay. Meta in a bit here. That looks like a dwarf decker. That looks like a rat shaman. Potential allies of of the of the module. I don't know what to do. Um, that seems r really thuggish at the same time. Now nah, it's never too late to be cool. But th that's Ponzi. That's a real Ponzi. Draw your weapon and remain silent. I don't actually know which way to go on this one, guys. Alright, I'm a badass gunslinging, gunslinging decker. What to do? I need my l black leather trench coat, really. The troll winks at you and gives his, uh, his attention to you. Maybe we got off on the wrong foot just now. Something we can do for you, officer. His mouth breaks into a pa patronizing grin. We draws tighten, his, but his tone stays cool and controlled. I'm looking for an old man, Raymond Black. We were supposed to meet him here. You know him? The troll nods his enormous head. Mm-hmm. Wu's voice gets an edge. You can see a vein in his temple start to pulse. Where is he? Carter sees it too, keeps her voice neutral. Easy, Duncan. The troll maintains amused eye contact, but his weapon stays trained on Wu. That's right. Easy, Duncan. Your friend Raymond never showed. We've been waiting for the better part of an hour. I think everybody can put their guns down? His voice is steady, but it's clear he's... I don't think so. Not until I get some answers. Like? He mutters through through gritted teeth. Like, why a group of heavily armed arseholes are meeting a little old man in the construction site at midnight? The old girl chimes in. Her tone is light. She's trying to defuse the situation. We do our jobs for money. We speak softly, but you know that means he's reaching the end of his rope. He cracks his neck. Pop, pop. What kind of jobs? She gets a weary look in her eye. Her answer is flippant. Odd jobs. Listen that. So, you're his tour guides, right? Troll's yellow brown tusks shift into a smile again. Kinda, yeah. The old man hired us to take you all on an incursion. Wu brow, Wu's brow furrows. Hired you. He takes a moment, looks them over. They're an odd assortment. A cybered up troll, an old girl with magical fetishes, a dwarf with a cyberdex on her back, 
and a tall elf standing behind them all, inscrutable. All with guns trained on Woo. Understand and spreads across the roof that yours titans, your shadow runners. The troll nods. Uh-huh. Wu's shoulders creep up, his stance tightens. This is bullshit. Raymond would never hire shadow runners, they're criminals. The troll corrects him. Mercenary operatives. I like this troll now. <laughs> the dwarf cuts in, her voice is soft and strong. The dwarf. That is not a dwarf picture, that's an elf picture. Dwarves do not have sharp pointed ears. Okay, minus one on that. <laughs> that that's an elf, that's not a dwarf. Criminal. Mercenary operatives. So yeah, we, you were right. Your buddy Raymond was associated with a bunch of hardened criminals. The troll tosses with a sideways smile while staring down the barrel of his gun. Sorry to burst your bubble, Lone Star. Guess you didn't know the old man as well you thought, right, huh? We tried to shake it off, but he's struggling to process the information. You can feel the heat coming off him. The runner sends it to and, and they tense up tight. They're keyed on Duncan and their guns are big. Looks on their faces and make it clear. One wrong bead of sweat and Duncan w and Woo's going down in a red mist cloud. Carter remains completely still, her voice is level, moderate. She's done this before. Let's all say to focus, no need for this to get ugly. She speaks quietly to Wu, who listens without turning, his focus squarely on the troll. We need to find Raymond. These are the people who can help us do that. Uh, what were you hired to do? You can tell the old girl's had enough of this tension. She blurts it out. The old man wants us to take him into... Kowloon Walled City. She waves a hand at three of you. You too. Two large rats cling into a hip and shoulder, poke their heads out the folds of the clothing. They fix their beady eyes on you intently. You know the Walled City. Some right, I've heard of it. The girl sneers, rolling her eyes. It's a shithole, the worst slum in the Eastern Hemisphere. Memories of growing up in the Roman Barons flash through your mind. We get it, it's a real bad place. Now why would a little old man pay you to take him there? The dwarf standing next to her nods and jumps in. Wouldn't say. He mumbled a lot too, just kept rambling on and about how he, how he had to get in. Under ordinary circumstances, I never would have accepted the gig. The walled city is the last place I want to go, but the old man rolled up a truckload of new yen, and you got to eat, right? Rue was to glance at you, his weapons remain trained as shadow runners, but a flicker of uncertainty crossed his face. Uh, why would we remember that? Okay, interesting story. Seems like a good time to ramp down the threat of violence. Troll flashes you a smile that's all tusks. Okay, gang, I'll tell you what. He looks at his team and he slowly starts to lower his weapon. We're all going to put down our guns. Get down now. Snipers, take cover. The sound of high caliber uh, rifle shots hang in the air and the red dots of laser sights sweep the area. Carter. The troll, the silent elf, lie dead in the winding pool of blood, their heads blown open like melons dropped from a four-story building. The girl screams from cover. Nightjar, Nightjar, come on, big man, talk to me. Gunshot? No, no. She turns to the dwarf, her eyes wide with fear. Oh shit, there is. This isn't good. A voice blows out the latest This is the police. Lay down your weapons, put your hands behind your head and come out where we can see you. Duncan Wu, Alex Coburn. Come out, we can see you. You've had you've got three seconds. Duncan crouches behind cover, his gaze locked on Carter's corpse. His voice comes out and holds, stand down, damn it. I'm not enforcement, Lone Star, Lone Star. He's driven deeper into cover by a hail of gunfire. The dwarf shakes her head at him, her voice flat. Save your breath, they won't listen. Use your eyes, these bastards aren't here to make your breaths. A sniper shot hits the wall next to her head, showing her an explosion of plaster. We need a way out of here, now. Everyone poked out, just give me a minute. The rat girl stares at the ground intently as she listens, then her brow furrows, her eyes go beady, and her nose wrinkles up. She begins to sway back and forth, her lips moving soundlessly. She snaps out of a trance. Okay, I've got a way out. It's at the end of the street. Everyone, come with me. Everyone, we don't need that rent -co goblet. We're the, we're the only ones now. The orc, the little orc, well, whips her head round towards their friend. The extra firepower is, I've got us an exit, but we've got to get past the heat, and we can't shoot our way out this on our own. If nothing else, they can soak a few rounds for us. She turns to you, her pupils pinpricks of intensity. Just stick to cover and keep close. There's a door down the street that leads to a back alley. That's our exit point. You fall behind, you get left behind. Nice. So where am I going? That away. Right. Heavy cover. Needed. Right. Oh, she's... Thank you, hairbrain scheme. We have a shaman that's also got other types of magic. Yes! 
useful. Oh, I missed a haste. Uh, it's not. Yeah, benefit of already being in cover, baby. <laughs> Nay launcher. Can't hit for shit, but uh, customized silver gun. further back than I thought you were. Okay, let's go through the captain. Stay in cover. I'm in cover. Oh, that's not pretty. Back off. Poison fog. That's nice. Um, woo. Put some round into that fucker wee. down. Damn it. Uh. Oh shit, she can't see him from there, really? Yeah, not cool. Oh. Booyah. Grenade! Ooh! That could have gone ended badly. Hmm. Oh, fetishes. No, that's just. That's just edge. Okay. Woo. Can you put some lead in him? Nice. And no, I'm not summoning a toxic fucking spirit. Let's reload that grenade launcher. Okay. It might be possible to use network connection on the police mode so I could do some damage to the local network. Deactivate the drones. The police drones power down. Where the hell were the police drones? Oh, those two. I'll take it. Uh, there's not particularly a lot of hard cover up that way. Alright, heal magic. Forward. That's a long fucking shot. Oh, it's a conjurer. Oh, that's not good. Oh, heavy cover. And he has an assault rifle. Yeah, that makes me happier. Alright. The conjurer must be too far away. Do you have aim on you still or not? No, you don't. How long does it last for? Oh, only two rounds. That's nothing. Alright, Duncan. Please put lots of bullets into that conjurer. Really? 
really. Isabel. Dwarf. Oh, that's not good. Ow. Isabel. Great on tree hills. Nice. Oh, look, she can do it again. Nice. Wow, that's awesome. Love me some green grenade launcher action. Oh yeah. Screw you. Ammo. I need me some more ammo in this grenade launcher. Ah, oh, crap. This stage. Oh, it's not worth it, to be honest. Alright, cage. Okay, so she can cover our... Assuming that person's going to run up behind me. Okay, Izzy, where are you? Nice. No, it's not Izzy. That is... Um, Gobbler. Oh, Sandbag Wall. We like Sandbag Walls. Again. Oh, it's a heavier calibre gun. Right. How much lead can you put that in that direction? Awesome. Okay. One grunt down. God, that's a short range spell, that fox spell. And she is just going to stay down there. What a frame for eight, two attacks. And no chance. Oh, 
Wow. Nice bit of damage. And bleeding damage. Oh, the flechettes, I guess. That was that meant to represent. Okay, they can't hit me either. So you what, I kind of wish I had a melee character here at the moment. Out of ammo! That's not... That's not good. Nice. Um, have some haste power. Boom. You are pissing me off. Couple of aim. Mages are there to make me look better. You put that aim up anymore either, do you? Is it? What's your grenade launcher? Not good. Go that way. Doesn't matter if you miss. Nice! <laughs> Who cares about accuracy when you have grenades? <laughs> Count the bullets. Hey, nice. Alright. Time to go. She's clear. She's clear. Duncan! Go, go, go! Leave it to the criminal to say the last. Right. We're out of dodge, hopefully. We're actually having to guide you from the doorway on the street through an eternity of winding alleys, damp base sub basements and empty buildings. Some through the refuge and filth you make your way into the sewers below Victoria Harbour. It reeks down here, but it's quiet. Goblet stops, sniffs, and wipes her eyes at the back of her wrist. Her rats squeak softly in the folds of her clothing. Dwarf watches her silently for a moment, then moves closer and gently takes her hand. In the dim light of the sewer, you can see they're nearly the same age. No more than 20. 21 tops. What were their names? She keeps her head down and, and tells her to the floor. The troll you were talking to was Nightjar. He was, a, he was our friend. The elf was called Gutshot. Kind of an arsehole, but I didn't need to see his head splattered everywhere like that. She inhales a cleansing breath. Nightjar was a good guy. Always had our backs. Isabel's and mine. Isabel nods in agreement. Her voice is flat. Red find a runner that you can actually trust. She looks my friend. Are we clear? Goblet looks back the, the way you came. I think we've shaken them. She says, yeah, yeah, we're clear. We begins pacing. His boots splashing the sewer walls, so creating echoes down the tunnel. You feel the tension coming off him in waves. This is bullshit. I'm done messing around in alleys and sewers. I'm done running from cops. He pokes a thumb at his chest and spits in anger. Spits his anger forth in a raspy growl. For fuck's sakes, I am a cop. We noticed. There's a lone star sergeant dead back there. Damn it, she was. We starts to choke up. He struggles against it, fighting to maintain control. But he needs a minute to recover. He's finally managed to, to put it together, but he's raw. When he speaks again, his voice is seething and hoarse. I don't know what the hell is going on with Hong Kong cops, but I'm calling in some Lone Star backup from home. I'm going to get some of my own people down there. Then we're going to find Raymond and figure out what the hell is going on. The little orc shrugs. Whatever you say, big guy, you have fun with that. She looks over at her friend. They both nod. Is he and I are out of here? Best of luck finding your friend. Your people died in the head of a sniper file. You're not going to do anything about it. Of course we're going to do something about it. In fact, we're going to do two things. Run and hide. <laughs> Look, we got you to safety, but now we are done with the shit. We don't intend to die for you. Wu isn't listening. You can see on his face that he's already written the old girl off. He pulls his security grade PDA from his holster on his left leg, raises it and starts tapping the buttons with a meaty finger. The Lone Star logo on the back of the device looks shiny and official. He stops confused, then taps it again harder. The red flash flashing image on the PDA reflects in his goggles. What the hell? I'm locked out of the network. 
He looks up at you. My law enforcement status has been revoked. He goes back to screen it. I don't believe it. They're saying there's an APB out on us, Alex. You and me both. Um, I figured as much. You, you heard them on the loudspeaker. They knew our names. We glares at the wall, a storm raging across his face. Fucking hell. His hand clutches his fist around his PDA. This just keeps getting worse. He leans forward as to punch the wall, his knuckles rapping against softly, a pantomime of barely contained rage. Suddenly, he turns and slings his PDA at the far wall. It hits hard, bounces back and clatters to the ground at his feet. He looks down at it, spent. The old girl's mouth an OK to herself, eyebrow was raised. And on that note, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Come on, Isabel, let's... She's cut off by a sudden smashing noise as her friend's boot comes crashing down the PDA at Wu's feet. Dwarf looks down at her work, unsatisfied, and brings the boot down again and again and again until, the thing's nothing, until there's nothing left but a style of plastic housing, broken glass, and circuit board. She looks up at Wu, her chest heaving, and points at the part of scrap she's created. Police issued. They can trace you through that. She turns to you. Hand out. Yours too. It's on the network. Smash it yourself. We buy, we buy our own. You crush the PDA to shards under your foot while Isabel looks on blankly. Good. She looks over at Goblet, sighs and reaches into her jacket pocket, pulls out two new PAs, she hands them to you and Duncan. Burners. I suppose it's the least we could do. After your help back there. Thanks. Now what? Now we get out of the sewer and head our separate ways. Right, Is? Isabel isn't listening. She's staring open mouthed at her own PDA. Bluish glow illuminating her horrified expression. I don't like the I don't like the use of PDAs. They're comlinks. Goblet, we gotta go right now. Isabel's face is monotone but empathic. She holds up her PDA to show a friend. They're after us too. Her screen displays a local newscast. Your own face share says back at you from the upper left corner of the screen. And in breaking news, just under an hour ago, Hong Kong Port Authorities were involved in a firefight with members of a terrorist cell linked to the mainland city state of Hian. The battle left three terrorists dead, along with the unconfirmed number of Hong Kong police officers. Your image winks out, replaced by scrolling image Duncan Wu, a mugshot from a long time ago, before Raymond. Our sources report the Seattle natives Duncan Wu and Alex Coban, along with the Hong Kong-based accomplices, are still at large. They are well-armed and should be considered extremely dangerous. Low-res photos of Goblet and Isabel pop up on screen, replacing Duncan Wu. The colour drains out of Goblet's face. Oh, shit. Kulan officials report that terrorist cell, known as White Star, maintains ties to the state of Henan, and is purported to be receiving weapons and funding from anti-corporate gangs in the UK city-state of Seattle. Port authorities are standing on high alert, and the Hong Kong Police Force's Special Deputies Unit has been engaged to deal with a threat. We now go live to Chief Inspector Kiat of the Special Duties Unit, who will be making a statement. Behind the newscaster, a video window displays the location of your firefight in Victoria Harbour. Camera pans to Chief Inspector Kiat. Oh, Krat. She is surrounded by a swarm of news reporters, but unf appears unfazed by the attention. She speaks with supreme confidence. We have yet to ascertain the motive for tonight's attack, but it's clearly a well-planned and coordinated effort. Krat sounds smooth, more like a corporate mouthpiece than a cop. We have already issued an all-points bulletin along kill with a kill or capture order for the four remaining terrorists, and I have instructed the Special Deputies Unit to make this manhunt a top priority. She looks directly at the camera. Should see one or more of these individuals, do not attempt to engage them. Instead, tap in Hong Kong Police Force flash code at the bottom of the screen. If you are on an authorized network and take a picture, our system will automatically identify them in your data stream. The decker switches off the newscast and clips the PDA back onto a belt. For a moment, there's no sound, but the roar of the sewer rushing through her pipes. Goblet bends o over, hands on her knees, sucking wind. Her rats scurry for a new position. I thought we were fucked before. <laughs> His voice seems to really calm, but now we are well and truly fucked. <laughs> Doesn't look good, does it? <laughs> he mouths, his mouth tightens. Not at all. He begins stalking back and forth, apparently from the cage. That's ironic. They've labelled us terrorists and there's an APB out on us. I've heard this kind of announcement before. I know what comes of it. It doesn't matter if we have nothing to do with whatever city state. They're going to hunt us down. It's open season. It's one nudges the remains of Wu's PDAs with a booted toe. And the two of us will be hunted down right alongside you. Goblet's wide eyed, wide eyes, the exit, tight as a spring. 
Um, you can hear Shadow Panther she leans towards than the other. We've got to go deep. Hit the mainland for a while until we can figure this out. Find a hole to crawl into. Goblet looks at Isabel, wipes her mouth, and points at you and Duncan. You've got to get them off the grid too, way off. The dwarf looks up at Duncan, her eyes, her large eyes narrow. Hey, Lone Star, you've got a security license, right? That means you've got a sin too. We've brown flowers. Of course I have a sin. I wouldn't be able to get paid otherwise. Only criminals and lowlifes go sinless. She runs her hands along the cyber deck, thinking, that means you can, you can be traced, both of you. You get spotted by a drone or security camera, you get ID'd by a retinal scanner, or try to use your credit card passport, the Hong Kong police force will know just where to find you. Wu crosses his arms across his chest. I know how a system identification number works, run runner. Hey, nice. Etiquette Shadow Runner for the win. We're gonna have to burn our sins if we're gonna survive this. You the two of them nod. You've got that right, Seattle. Goblet pulls at uh, her dreadlocks. We're just as screwed as you. Me and Iz, we've, we're listed as compass, and we can't afford for you to get caught. That you'll, you'll lead them to us, one way or another. DNA samples, things we told you, astral residue, I don't know. Cop stuff. Little Decker looks up from you to Woo, eyes narrowed, sizing you up. You can see her make a silent decision before she speaks. Her voice is flat, resigned. We need to get your sins burned, delete them from your rec from record books, all of them. All of them? Whoa, wait a minute, you want us to just erase our identities? Woo rubs her hand across the scalp. Beyond the fact that it's insane, will that even work? If we burn our sins, go off grid like that, won't you just redouble the efforts to find us? God, this is a long conversation. I wanted to end this video after this conversation, guys. Sorry, it's going to be a long video again. Condens... Condens... Condescension. Sorry, dyslexic. Sweeps its way into Isabel's dry tone. Imagine playing a game of hide-and-seek with a siren strapped to your head. Would you rather try to hide with a siren or with a siren conspicuous? Conspicuously absent. Let's just get on. What do we have to do? Goblet's voice drops. We gotta ask for help. There's only one person we know. We know has that kind of pull it takes to burn a sin and hide us from the cops. Kindly, Chen. Sound underworld hard ass like a walnut. She's what's known as a straw sandal, kind of a middle manager for the Yellow Lotus Syndicate, their triad. Kindly Chen controls all the legal activity in our neighbourhood, smuggling, bootlegging, and counterfeiting. It sounds like my kind of scum. She leans in, serious as death, this is no joke. Kindly Chen controls a good sized portion of Kulan's underworld. She has soldiers, resources, she's smart, and she's not to be underestimated. As well as voice is hollow and flat. Taking favours from a woman like Kindly Chen, it's a good way to get yourself into indentured servitude. You don't want to owe favours to a woman like that. Her eyes get big, round. Ideally, you don't want to deal with her at all. That was Nightjar's job. You mean you work with her? What do we just tell you? She's got her fingers and everything, including broken shadow runs for the corpse. Kindly Chen is our fixer. That makes sense. Tries to make her voice light, confident. Just stay on a good side and you have nothing to worry about. Now let's get done, bef get done before one of you trips the APB and brings all hell down on us. Finished. I can save it. Well, everybody, we're going to leave it there for episode one of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Kind of wordy, but not bad so far. So, let's see what episode two has in store. So, I hope you join us, uh, join me for that, everybody. Till then, ciao, chamas.